Do you wish your dog could do this? Here. Good boy. Good. But instead they end up doing a bunch of this. Hello. Hey, you, come here. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, get your bar over here right now. Come here, come here, come here. Well, lucky for you, that's exactly what we're gonna teach him in today's video. Today, we are gonna teach our dogs to come back when called, AKA recall. Recall is just a really fancy way of saying, come back to me. Now, let's talk about why your dog probably isn't coming back to you when you call them right now. It's likely because you're doing a lot of taking away. You see, we build this pattern of calling our dog back to us and sticking them in the house, which then takes them away from playtime outside or we call them back from playtime with another dog friend and put the leash on. We call them back, we take the ball away from them. We call them back, we take the stick away from them. We call them back and then we put them in a crate. We build this pattern of taking away. So your dog starts to figure out the more they come to you, the higher the chance that you're taking away the thing that they're doing. And that could be as simple as just sniffing and exploring. So everything we're gonna teach our dogs today is gonna flip that upside down. First, let's address what command you're gonna use. Now the most common word used all over the States is come. And if you wanna stick with that word, by all means, stick with it. Here's why I might suggest you switch it up though. If you already have this habit of saying come and your dog is blowing you off, you've already made that word an option. They could do it, they could not do it, but it doesn't sound like they're being very consistent in responding to that word. So I like to start fresh. I like to start brand stinking new with my training dogs. I use the command here. Here is a word that most clients have to think a little harder about before they say. It's not a word they're used to saying. If you're used to saying that word, you're much more likely to overuse that word and not be consistent reinforcing it. So you might just say, Fluffy, come on. Scout, come on. Turkey roll, come on, let's go. And all of that is just good fun banter, but we really want this word to stick out and be very special as opposed to the rest. So I like to pick a word that's gonna be a little harder for you to think about. You could also say banana. You could also say cheesecake. You could also say mushroom. I don't care what word you guys say, but I don't want it to be an entire phrase and definitely don't make it a whole monologue. Listen here, Sriracha, you get your little honey over here right now or I'm gonna spank your little tushy into the ground. We're not doing that, okay? Instead, you're gonna pick one word that is going to consistently mean, come on back, Terry. So now that we've figured out what word you're gonna say, we're also gonna need some training equipment. I'm gonna be using a prong collar on Crash. He's already been conditioned to the prong collar. We've already done a lot of training on the prong collar. He understands the prong collar. If your dog has never been on a prong collar before, don't start there. Go watch my video on how to condition them to it first. But since he's been conditioned, I'm gonna put on the prong collar. Additionally, I'm gonna be using a long line as well as some high value treats. Now let's talk treats, because this is my magic wand when it comes to training recall. What I'm gonna do is train with something so high value, your dog's gonna wanna get their little tushy on back every single time. What I like to train with is something high value like chicken, string cheese, hot dogs, and if not any of those, at least a big old handful of treats. You see, I wanna make the command here extra, extra, extra special. And I do that by training with really high value treats. If here equals hot dogs, I promise you, your dog's gonna run on back to you. Now, that's not the only thing we're gonna rely on because at a certain point, hot dog does not beat squirrel. Chicken does not beat sniff. Sometimes the world is gonna have more high value things that your dog goes, yeah, I know you have chicken, but also I don't really care today. That's just gonna be one portion of this, but it's gonna be a really, really helpful tool. Keep in mind, if your dog has a sensitive tummy, don't like use a bunch of cheese and get them constipated or give anyone diarrhea. Find something that works for them. One time I was training a Husky who was not very food motivated. So what I did is I skipped her breakfast completely. I used all kinds of yummy stuff, girl could care less. And then one day I had pizza for lunch and all I had for a high value treat was pizza crust, it changed the game. I don't know what it was, but this pizza crust got her going and her recall was fantastic after that. So use what your dog loves. So now we've got what command we're gonna use. We've got the training equipment we need as well as our dog's favorite training treat. 
Let's jump into the exercise. When you first practice this, I want you to start in your house. I know it seems silly and your dog maybe already is a good listener inside, but what we're aiming to do with this command is build reps. Make sure a leash is on your dog. So you're just gonna walk around your house and wait for your dog to be distracted, which might take a little bit because once they get a whiff of that chicken, it might be a lot harder for them to want to pay attention to the house because they know you smell so delicious. But just ignore them. Don't make eye contact, don't talk, just completely ignore them, walk around the house. As soon as your dog gets a little distracted and walks away from you, you're gonna say the command, apply pressure on your leash, walk backwards, and as soon as your dog reels into your bubble, give them a treat. Now we're not gonna say sit, we're not gonna expect them to do anything else. I want there to be kind of an instant gratification that as soon as your dog gets within your bubble, you release the leash pressure and then back it up with the treat. So we're utilizing leash pressure to guide our dog to what we want them to do, and then using the high value treat, Here. AKA the chicken, to make that behavior extremely rewarding. Treat. Training with your training equipment and a leash is what's gonna help to make this not optional. You could certainly practice this without a leash on your dog. You're gonna kind of desperately be showing them the chicken, wanting them to lure over to you. And I just don't find that that's very realistic. I like having a leash on my dog to show them what to do, to steer them around like a horse. And then when I get the behavior that I'm looking for, then back it up with the treats. Now make sure when you say this command, you're only saying at one time. I don't want to hear anybody out there going here, here, here. The more you say it, the more your dog just learns it's optional. They don't have to. So how can you say this is not optional? That comes down to the leash. So let's go through this again. You're going here. to say the command just one time. Do not repeat it. You hear me? Don't say it any more than once. Here. here. Apply Good leash boy. pressure, literally pull the leash. Start walking backwards. When you walk backwards, Here. your dog has no option but to turn Here. it around Good. and come back within your bubble. Here. As soon as they're committed Good. to coming and in your bubble, you're gonna relax that leash Here. pressure and back it up with the treat and then free, Here. let them go right back to what they were doing. Now, since you're playing this in the house as your very first training session, it's gonna be pretty easy. And once your dog starts to get into a good flow, you can actually just drop that leash and practice Here. this all around your house. In fact, practice it from different rooms. Here. Remember, we're just doing reps in this exercise. And the good thing about it is your dog is gonna get tired because we're adding mental stimulation. So practice it from different rooms, Here. be in your bedroom, call them from the living room, be in the Here. living room, call them from the bedroom, just be in different rooms and call them from different areas. And every single time they come back to you, make sure you are rewarding. I want you to over train this concept. I want you to over reward this command. We want to build a high reward history with the command here. So now we've done it all inside. Well, it's time to take it outside, but wait, we're not gonna just go for a hike just yet. No, 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 no. We want to gradually build on our environments. So practice this in your back yard or your front yard, or maybe you have a fenced area outside of your apartment. Have on your long line for your dog and practice the exact same thing. Say the command, Here. apply leash pressure, Good walk boy. backwards, reward your dog, and then release them. If you start to notice as you're practicing that you say the command here and your dog is Here. turning around Good before you boy. have the opportunity to apply the leash pressure, that is a good sign. That's exactly what we're aiming for. We're not gonna always use the leash pressure to get our dog to come back to you, but the leash pressure is the thing that teaches the dog and shows the dog this is not optional, you have to do it, or you're gonna reel them in like a little fishy poo. But once they're cueing the Here. word, you get to ditch Good. the leash pressure, and then you're just left with the command walking backwards and treats. Now I tend to walk backwards and get really excited and fun for quite a while. I'm not boring. Notice when he's coming back to me, I'm not a tree post, okay? I'm fun, I'm bubbly, I am a good time. And again, that's what makes my dog interested in me and less interested in the distractions around them. So be fun and bubbly. And when they come back, throw them a party, give them those high value treats. I pretty typically leave the long line on for quite a while because the long line is kind of that extra safety net. It's that thing that's gonna give you the security that if your dog just decides not to come back to you and they wanna sniff and explore, you can step on the leash, pick it up, and again, reel them in like a fish. If I say the command here, my dog is coming back to me either on their own or because I'm making them come back to me using my leash. It is a not optional command. If your dog is starting to respond to your command, not needing the leash pressure and coming back to you each and every time, let's add one 
another step to this. We're gonna insert to incorporate a sit stay. So you're gonna call your dog back to you. And then as soon as they get within the bubble, instead of immediately reinforcing it with a treat, you're gonna add one other command, which is gonna be sit. So yeah. it'll be here, sit, Good then boy. treats, sit. then throw them a party, love, praise, smoochies and then free to let them go right back to what they were doing. If you're in an emergency situation and you need to call your dog back to you, you also need them to be stationary, to put the leash on, to grab a hold of them, to put them into the heel position. Whatever the case is, you kind of need a moment of still. So sit is gonna give you the opportunity to get a little bit of control of your dog in those real life scenarios. Here, walk backwards, sit, treats, throw them a party, release them back to what they were doing. And that's all. That's how you teach your dog to come back to you. Now, obviously this is gonna take a lot of time and a lot of reps. Make sure you're training with your high value treats and your long line. But if you're wondering, how do you start to teach this without relying on a leash and relying on treats? Well, you're just gonna have to subscribe to stay tuned because we are very, very close to working on the e-collar training portion of Crash's training. And that's how we're really gonna get him off leash. Good luck and happy training. Do you have any comments, questions, concerns? Yes, you bet. Bye, see you next week. <laughs>